Welcome to another Business Spotlight. My name is Megan, and today I have Dave Berlin, wears many, many hats, and just a few of them would be an ambassador for Bunker Labs. He is also now the state coordinator for Global Entrepreneurship Week here in Nevada, and one of, you know, again, many different things, also a DJ, and so we have lots of fun with that. Um, but now I'm going to send it over to you, Dave, and so really just please introduce yourself and kind of talk about this crazy journey that you've had in business and entrepreneurship and all of the above. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to uh, share my story. Uh, I always have to start with the DJ part first, <laughs> right? So every time I introduce myself, that's always the last thing that I bring up. Um, and just to clarify, uh, I'm not like living in my grandma's basement, DJing nightclubs. Um, I actually oh, no. got started in DJing weddings uh, and I've been DJing weddings since 2010. Um, and it's really funny because DJing weddings is how I learned everything that I learned about business. Hmm. Um, it was, uh, I got started back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'd help actually grow that DJ business that was primarily in Tulsa and Oklahoma into Dallas, Kansas City, Denver, Indianapolis, um, all over the Midwest. So before I moved to Vegas, I'd already DJed probably 350 weddings all over the, the country. And it's driving around, listening to business books, learning about sales, learning about marketing, uh, building community. Uh, and along the way, I got to meet all of those uh, authors that really inspired me and stuff like that. So I've had great mentors uh, and I've applied all that into community building. Um, as a, as a Marine Corps veteran, when I found out about Bunker Labs and, uh, that program helps veterans and their spouses start and grow businesses, um, I fell in love with it. Um, and it's, you know, I found out about them in Oklahoma and whenever I moved here, I actually got to start the chapter here in Vegas. Uh, so I've been doing that for the last couple of years and that just led to other community building like Global Entrepreneurship Week and, and all that stuff. But, uh, keep money in the bank. It's, it's weddings. I do about 60, 65 weddings a year. Uh, and I run a small team here in Vegas, uh, and we're slowly taking over, uh, <laughs> some of the, the different preferred networks and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. And I know, uh, you had started a library with Bunker Labs and books are, I mean, we talk about books a lot, you and I, so, yeah. What do you feel, or what would be your recommendations for, I would say like maybe the top two or three books that every entrepreneur, um, budding entrepreneur, business owner would really like, it would behoove them to, to read these. Yeah. So there's, gosh, there's so many, uh, <laughs> that's a really hard question. Um, it obviously I could get very surgical if I were in, you know, if somebody's struggling with this or that, but the general books, I think that um, everyone should read are going to be, if I had to do one on mindset, it would be start with why by Simon mm -hmm. Sinek. Um, if it was going to be kind of the overall tactical operations of business, there's one that's not on a lot of people's shelf. It's mm -hmm. called total focus and it's by mm -hmm. Brandon Webb. He's a, a Navy seal. Um, and there's lots of, you know, Navy seals that have become authors, but what was interesting about his story he wasn't just a Navy SEAL, he was a Navy SEAL sniper, and he rewrote the entire sniper instruction program. Oh, wow. So the way that his mind works is fascinating, but he's also like a $300 million um, business owner for a media company. Hmm. So that one's really good. It just, it's all about decision-making and, you know, there's plenty of sales and, and marketing books and stuff like that, that I think are, are powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and here at Action Coach, we have Brad's like library of books as well. And so, I mean, I definitely feel like you can never, you can never know too much. And even if it's similar material, but it's just seeing it from another perspective or from another background is, is always interesting. So I love that. Yeah. Well, even reading some of the same books, like if yeah. you go back through it, if you're going through something different, you'll get something different out of it. So absolutely. there's probably five books that I always go back to, uh, depending on what I'm challenged with or what I'm struggling with. And, and those are the ones that generally help me get through, uh, some of the bigger challenges or systems. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of going on like this journey idea, what would you say is, what were some like pivotal moments in your journey and, and really kind of talking about decisions where 
it was like you needing to make some really key decisions to kind of get you to that next level. And how did you navigate that? Yeah, you know, entrepreneurship is hard. And there's uh, sometimes the ideas outweigh the execution. Uh, that's something that I am, you know, generally struggle with. I think a lot of founders do. It's like they have this great big vision and sometimes bringing it together doesn't always work. Uh, and some of those decisions are who, what's my next step, right? Mm -hmm. Do I need to take a step back and go learn from somebody else? Uh, through my journey of entrepreneurship in the last, you know, 15 years, I've, I've, taken a step back. I've taken jobs. I've went and worked and learned from other people. Um, so that's really the most important thing. And when it comes to decisions, I think a lot of people feel like whatever decision they make, it's going to be that forever. Mm, and yeah. if there's anything that the pandemic taught us, it's that we live life in seasons now. So, um, mm -hmm. and that season could be associated with the business card or the title that you're carrying. Um, but it could just be, you know, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to learn everything I can about this industry. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes yeah. you have to be, I have a good friend. He says, you have to be a white belt again and you have to be mm -hmm. okay with that. Um, so some of those decisions are the hardest because there's been times where I made a decision uh, and quickly learned it was not the right one. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, and sometimes it feels like I go back and I start from, from scratch but mm -hmm. generally, uh, all these lessons that I've learned with all these different titles, I have this sort of book of ideas or sometimes a book of products on mm -hmm. the shelf that I that I stored away. And I learned the lesson that I, I needed to learn and I'll pull it off and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll fire back up again. So uh, cool. it's really just, you know, being <laughs> confident in the decisions that you make uh, and, and taking responsibility for that. I think that's... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, being a veteran and, and having that experience, what do you find um, is kind of something that has been transferable from your life in the military and then also in business ownership? Yeah, there's, there's a lot, but I think one of the most important things is uh, trust and communication. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that we, we had to have in the military. Um, I was, I was in the Marines, so that was not um, an easy feat at all. Uh, you're bringing some pretty rough and tough people all together uh, and getting them to work together. So it's, you know, the things that I learned the most was core values. I, you mm -hmm. know, when I learned later, uh, one of the other powerful books was um, Delivering Happiness by the late Tony Shea, um, learning how he applied core values on such a high level to such a big business. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was important for me to understand that that's how you build a strong culture, right? Yeah, so that's, he did that's, that well. <laughs> uh, that's definitely one, but, but also operations too, you know, in the mm -hmm. military, it's like, you have such a, a powerful system of operations. You can put somebody in another country or in another place on the planet and say, Hey, we need this to look just like mm. back at Camp Pendleton. It needs to work the same way. And you're like, okay, I know how that works. I can make that happen. Uh, and that's actually one of the big lessons that I learned in the wedding industry. Um, as we duplicated our operations into other cities, it was based on strong core values, but also operations. Mm -hmm. um, and then on a smaller level down to uh, down to weddings itself, just like an individual timeline, um, you kind of care more about everything. Uh, mm -hmm. so uh, a wedding timeline is very important to me because I want to make sure this is the best day. Excellence matters. The yeah. curtain being off just a little bit, like I see that and I know the cameras are going to see that. So mm -hmm. I'll fix it. Uh, just yeah. all those little things, uh, definitely have an impact in, in everything that I do. Nice. All right. So we're going to shift a little bit. And so last year was the first time that we held the global entrepreneurship week in Las Vegas. And so that was exciting. And I know just us as a city kind of wrapping our minds around what the opportunity is for, for our community and really what this looks like on a global scale. And so I'd love for you, because now you're going to the state level. So really just speaking into what, just kind of high level, what Global Entrepreneurship Week is um, and kind of what goes into that and being involved in that, what, what are some of the benefits and really at the economic level and individually? 
Yeah. So Global Entrepreneurship Week, I actually, uh, I got exposed to that back whenever I was living in Tulsa. You know, I've been out here for five years. Um, I learned about Global Entrepreneurship Week all the way back, I think in like 2014 or, or mm -hmm. 2015. And it uh, started out of Kansas City. There's a big uh, foundation there called the Coffin Foundation, and it all focus, focuses around entrepreneurship. Uh, they have lots of programs all over the world. They have a big Global Entrepreneur Summit, uh, which is one big event um, where leaders from all around the world go. Mm -hmm. Global Entrepreneurship Week is really a cool opportunity for every community to raise awareness and get the community working together uh, by hosting events uh, mm -hmm. that have to do with entrepreneurship. So um, as I got involved, I actually visited one in Kansas City. I think it was 2014. They had like 80 events all over the city. Wow. Um, and it's all the way down from like school entrepreneurship, like kids in entrepreneurship to cool. adults. They had micro groups, uh, chambers got involved, uh, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. As I saw that really impact the city of Tulsa, Tulsa has went through a transformation since 2017 mm -hmm. uh, of being involved at that level. They've really tried to change their reputation from being just oil and gas to having a more diverse economic opportunity. So yeah. by them being involved, because uh, the way Global Entrepreneurship Week works, it's one week in November, all these communities host all these events. So it's just like, what if we got like all the entrepreneurs in the world to jump up and down at the same time? <laughs> yeah. um, and it's fascinating, it <laughs> it's fascinating that Vegas had never really participated on it at a, at a huge level, um, because primarily Vegas has always been focused on the economy of the strip. Uh, mm -hmm. entertainment, things like that. But we've seen such a diverse uh, shift happen since COVID. So to me, it was like, if all this stuff is happening, but we're the only ones that see it, mm -hmm. nobody, everyone's still going to think that it's just, well, it's, it's gambling and it's, it's uh, conventions. Oh, and I guess it's sports now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but how do we show people that there's a huge economic opportunity uh, because under all that stuff, there's billions of dollars mm -hmm. that flow through the the streets of of this city, you know, every week. Yeah. So how do we how do we tap into that? So by getting involved with uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week, uh, we were able to pull some of the community together. It's it's mm -hmm. funny because most people are like, "What is it?" Uh, <laughs> and but we were able to pull enough people together. We had twenty events all in the same week. Yeah. Um, and now more people know about it. And, and thankfully, I had cameras rolling. We've got some great interviews that are all being put together. So this year we can show people mm -hmm. what we did. Uh, the, the biggest lesson I learned was nobody wants to be first. Everybody wants to be next. So so many yeah. people were like, we'll see what it is first. Now people <laughs> showed up and saw it. And now everybody wants to, to, to yeah. step up. So. And it's so funny you say that, too, because like that's been my, I've lived in Las Vegas my whole life and growing up here, watching the evolution of things and, and all the shifts that we've made as a city. Um, and I think one of the bigger ones really has been of, we are so much more than, than just the strip. We're so much more than gaming and tourism and, and conventions. There's, there's actually a city and their community out here. And small business is a big part of that. And I know with uh, COVID, there were a lot of small businesses that took a hit. And that's where I know I noticed the business community really come together and say, hey, I'm struggling. Like, how can I help you? Okay, let's do business together. Let's try this out. Let's, let's partner up. And so that was really beautiful to watch. And so that's where I think, you know, the the launch of global entrepreneurship it's it is kind of more of that thing and i don't know if it's if it's if it is something that is more vegas we're like mm, we'll see <laughs> or what well it's so here's the thing and now there's all this push to bring more people to vegas and mm -hmm. and there's going to be people that come through all the time yeah uh, but most people won't stay um, it, this is all opinion, right? So a lot of people, if they are business owners and stuff like that, they don't mm -hmm. see a viable way. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. look at the strip as a big enemy and there for small businesses here, there are some challenges. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But one thing you can't be is the community. Um, if you go to a community and you're a startup founder, whether it be tech business or a service-based business, product-based business, um, most people want community, right? At the root of who we are as humans, we want that. 
So yeah. if there is a community and an ecosystem that supports and, and brings other entrepreneurs together, mm-hmm. that's one thing that people want to see. Now, as we put all these videos together and, and hear what people say about it, I hope that's going to be a different conversation than what people have heard in the past. And they can yeah. literally see handshakes happening. But uh, I've also, there's also a very important thing with Las Vegas and I've started almost every meeting that I'm in, I kind of make this the punctuation um, before we tear down another um, casino or mm-hmm. another uh, hotel or something like that. I would really consider changing one of those into a center for entrepreneurial research or, mm-hmm. you know, some type of a, a, a place that people can go that's not predicated on me as a person, right? Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, Tony Shea had such a huge impact on the the culture of the city, but there's a lot of things that unfortunately died with him that people want pieces of. Um, and it's not that it, it can't be fired back up, but if you create a place like in Austin, it's the Capitol factory, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, in, it is. in Kansas city, <laughs> in Kansas city, it's the Kauffman foundation and everyone knows they can mm-hmm. go there um, and to me, if we had something like that on our skyline, yeah, that changes the conversation forever. Just like when Allegiant Stadium got added to the skyline, that invited the whole world of sports to consider hosting or yeah. moving their whole headquarters to Las Vegas. We could do the same thing with uh, with entrepreneurship. And because at the root of this city, if you look at how the city was even created, Mm-hmm. it's built on innovative ideas oh it's built absolutely. on innovation and there's and so a little bit people, of rebellion a little bit of rebellion <laughs> you know i tried that's my political it was built on innovation right yeah. mm-hmm. um, but at, i mean if you really look at it like I, I saw this comic and it's always stuck with me and i couldn't believe i'd ever live in las vegas after growing up in a small town in oklahoma it was this comic and it was like a sunday comic and it was this this guy saying, imagine this. And in his little thought bubble, it was all the hotels, but mm. all the other person saw was a desert. Uh, uh-huh. It's like, that's, that's innovation. So we yeah. can take, you know, something from nothing and turn it into one of the most incredible cities that everybody knows on the whole planet. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, I guess the, the catchphrase here is it, it can be at the grassroots level for the local mm-hmm. community, or it can be global. Uh, and yeah. that's the power of Global Entrepreneurship Week is we can stand up and show show that to people. Yeah, I love that. And and really, and, and again, like you were saying, it's it's if it's again, it's just shifting the conversation and the and and offering other opportunities. And I really do see that if there were something, and and that was really what was exciting for me coming on with action coaches, you know, we've been doing a lot of different things globally. And so it's how do we bring that here to Vegas and how do we really excite people in business? And, you know, we do have our young entrepreneur smart start program that will be rolled out here in Las Vegas. And and again, it's getting those, the, the next generation to be excited and to get acquainted more with what business ownership looks like. And so then by that way, it's also then rolling that into things such as Global Entrepreneurship Week or different opportunities that are coming to the city or, or on their way um, or here. And, and just saying, yeah, how do we support that ecosystem of entrepreneurs? So it's there's a lot of excitement right now in our city, I think. So well, there's excited. there's a lot of different smaller groups and, and mm-hmm. everyone can kind of silo and, and every ecosystem struggles with uh, siloed groups and people not necessarily working together. And and for some industries, that's okay. There's a very big division in this city, as the, I'm sure there are in most. It's not just, you know, s- starting a business doesn't have to mean tech. That's what a lot of people associate. Yeah. But it's not just the startup and tech ecosystem. It is the, the small business for services uh, and mm-hmm. products. So a lot of times people try to loop those together, but mm-hmm. there is a big division there. The interesting thing about Global Entrepreneurship Week is it's a way to bring everybody together and celebrate all the mm-hmm. chambers, right? I, I think uh, they give us so many resources to educate people of why they should get involved. I have like 20 different PDFs that are just for different groups and, and yeah. Global Entrepreneurship Week is recognized. You know, there's a whole 10 page PDF for veteran entrepreneurs. Mm. There's one for women entrepreneurs. There's one for um, black entrepreneurs, there's, 
just there's one for specifically for all the chambers, um, mm-hmm. for all the the colleges that have a, a business ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, so it it is that diversity. The important thing is if we can show the world, even for one week, that we can come together. Um, a lot of people will kind of raise a different eyebrow. Maybe next time they come through Las Vegas and be yeah. like, oh, you know, it is free state taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I know even, um, again, I actually had this conversation just recently with another person that grew up here. And, and, and that is one of those things of, of be, being community-based like we are. That is one way of, that we kind of go through. It's like, okay, you're here. But not only what are you going to do, what add, you know, what value add are you going to impart on our city? But also, how long are you staying? Like, are you just kind of coming through? Or are you just using this as a, a headquarter for operation? But you're really doing business elsewhere, and so it really is. Um, and I may be fine too, and, and I'm sure that this could also, you know, probably be uh, the same thing in, in other locations. But again, it's really it's like that give back. Of, of how how are we giving back and, I'm, and when I say that it's not necessarily um, by uh, like a you know, non you know nonprofit based right. but it really is again that exchange like what business are we doing here and how are we supporting the the economy there so yeah 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 and how how can you leave the community in a better place than when you got here Mm-hmm. Right. There's, there's a, a guy I just met. I've known him for about six or seven months. He just moved back last week from Bali. He'd been in Bali for the last six months. He lived here for a, maybe a year or so before that. And he doesn't know really anybody mm-hmm. um, here in Vegas because he's a YouTube guy. He does all his stuff online. Guy makes great money, has built a massive network of people that, that know and love him. And and I met with him and it was contagious how much he wants to help people. Mm. But this time he's like, dude, I've been watching all your stuff. I want to get plugged in. I want to know what's up with Vegas. And it's funny because just in three introductions that, that we can make happen for him, it could change. It could like put his, his business in like a whole nother stratosphere Mm -hmm. Um, because that's, you know, there's, there's definitely the capability to work alone. Uh, But there's, there's so many remarkable people in the city that are also connected to other big communities um, that's, mm-hmm. that's our responsibility while we're here is to make sure that people get the most out of it, uh, while they're here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I similarly had a conversation with another woman who, again, grew up here. She left, traveled and recently came back and, and connected with me because she wanted to get more involved in the community directly and saying, Hey, I, I would love to get, you know, to do more here and to really plant my roots back here. And so, and again, and I think it's by way of, you know, people such as yourself of, of showing what we're doing here in Las Vegas. And, and I, cause again, it's, it's just shifting that mindset of you can create something amazing here in Las Vegas and it will be supported. And, you know, when you really plug yourself in. So I think yeah. community is really, is really a lot of it for sure. Yeah. And over the years, when I look at all the stuff that I've done, I, I kind of narrowed that down, right? Uh, so it's funny, there's a book, there's two books called Traction, um, but there's actually one that's all about marketing. It's called mm-hmm. Traction, it's by Gabriel Weinberg. And in that book, I think there's like 19 or 20 different traction channels that he goes over because most people, when they think marketing, they're like, oh, you mean Facebook ads? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And and it's it's interesting because that's what some people think all marketing is, right? Yeah. It's either that or billboards. It's like the stuff that you see or <laughs> yes. the stuff that, that, that jumps like in There's head. so much in between. <laughs> there's so many. And um, when I went through that checklist and I go through that checklist often when I do strategic planning sessions with people, it's not that you have to do all of them. It's like, what are the most mm. important three right now? Not forever, yeah. but right now that can help you get to that next level. And as I went through all of the, the experiences that I've had in different roles, I mm-hmm. realized that community building and live events are where I really get the most excited. So mm-hmm. if it's got something to do with community building, I want to see it. If it's got something to do with live events, I want to see it. And a lot of times <laughs> there's already like packaged 
things that that are happening globally that mm. could be happening right here. Global Entrepreneurship Week is the best of both of those. Yeah. Uh, but there's other organizations like Disrupt HR or One Million Cups that people mm. that some people come here and like, oh, you guys don't have that here. And it's yeah. like, well, we could. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you it's something do it? kind, of, yeah, <laughs> kind of based on that. And it's like, yeah, start it here. Um, so mm. I, I, I love seeing things created from scratch. But there's also power in something that's chapter based yeah. that can bring that uh, that system here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also that familiarity because then when people are looking at coming, they're like, oh, they got one million cups. Oh, they got Disrupt HR. Oh, they've got Global Entrepreneurship Week. Oh, they've got a Bunker Labs. And yeah. it's like all, all these things, they're like, let's let's go like we're good yeah. yeah and i know for us at action coach our our big thing is definitely being that resource um because there are like you said there are so many kind of different groups or organizations that are kind of spread like just spread out wow. um and that's it's a it's by way of almost being that like common link of yeah. of you know information and it also goes back to really our mission of of just world abundance through business re-education and education. And it's it's just half shifting those conversations, you know, like I said before. And, you know, there's just so much magic that can happen without really knowing. And it's just taking that step by step. And first it starts with being the resource. So I I absolutely want to edify that because one thing that I left off on the titles that I've had, mm -hmm. um, I was a, a sales and leadership coach for a large firm. Uh, for about two years, uh, a while back, and I coached individuals one on one. Thirty, I about thirty one people. Oh, I had one on one for almost two years, and I could not have done that without a good coach. Mm -hmm. um, and my coach carried me through some of the hardest technical challenges, like the technical part of sales and all that stuff, and and leading people. That's natural for me. Yeah. But it was all the emotional stuff that I was going through. So, and a lot of times, like the stuff that's happening in life can affect your business. Um, and it can, and if you have employees that can definitely affect your employees, which affects your business. Um, so I think what you guys are doing at Action Coach is so powerful because you're, you're bringing it at the smallest level of, of mm -hmm. just resources and education, but also at the highest level of like really, you know, locking arms with people and saying, Hey, before you make this decision, yeah, hear me out. And and yeah. a lot of times that <laughs> just that little uh, moment of clarity can help mm. people make the best decision and and really uh, get the momentum that they need uh, to be not only successful but also to carry other people up too. So yeah, absolutely. And thank you. And in really, in my opinion, that's that's leadership. Is leaders good leaders create leaders. And it's also by way of, of being humble enough to know that you can't see everything all at once. I like to put it in the way of when you're inside the picture, you cannot see the whole picture. Yeah. So that's where it helps to have a coach or have a mentor that is outside of that picture that can see 360 degrees and say, okay, yeah, I see that. And did you also see this? Or did you want to maybe turn and look at that from, from this angle uh yeah so that's where it definitely it's it's helpful for sure i know personally that's how i have thrived um it was by way of having coaches and that really definitely made it to where i'm like hey i i really love this and i love this work and so it was just that natural progression of becoming a coach myself so it's i enjoy it it's fun <laughs> i love it yeah, well, thank you again so, so much. I mean, just a wealth of knowledge. I always enjoy our conversations and we go on 500 different tangents. So yeah. It's always yeah. an adventure. We never know where it's going to go. Uh, I think we're just constant recording. That's what we're going to do. But it's been so, so wonderful um, having you on here. And before we really wrap up and complete, is there anything uh, top of mind that you really wanted to promote and share within the organizations that you're involved with? Yeah, I mean, um, for right now, uh, as I go through a little bit of a rebrand, right? Um, one thing I noticed um, as far as community building, one thing that I can do to really highlight that, uh, we have such a powerful tool. Uh, it's a podcast, right? And I, I did a podcast back through the pandemic, like a lot of people, but as the live events and all that stuff started opening back up, 
um, it, it got hard to stay like be in person and online and just, mm. you know, kind of keep up with all that. Um, I'm just a solopreneur. Uh, but there's so many things that have led me back to launching the podcast. So the podcast will be firing up soon. The easiest nice. way to connect with me is just davemeansbusiness.com. Um, right now, it's just a simple link tree as I'm kind of working out all the flow and details of everything. Uh, but that's where you can find social media, all those things. And I'm generally actively promoting uh, all the different organizations that that I'm celebrating. Uh, we'll have some big dates coming up soon to announce stuff for Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, but also the uh when the podcast gets ready i'm really excited about that and just that little caveat was you know in the past it was the dave means business podcast uh <laughs> grow your network grow your business and now just that little niche is grow your network grow your business uh with by building community and live events so that's going to nice. be a lot more of the focus um, but we're going to be able to find some really radical people around the world uh, that are doing just that i love it i'm so excited i cannot wait to see where all of this goes and, and have you relaunch. So yeah, congratulations. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again for coming on here and thank you for all of you for watching another Business Spotlight.